Freedom's Music Minute is back with not really an impromptu, but a rather short notice quick review. Jethro Tull uh, have released um, a new album recently, and I thought about it for a little while and had to come to the conclusion that yes, I am a Jethro Tull fanboy. Um, I've been a fan of this band um, since I was six years old um, and came across the Living in the Past um, compilation and I've followed them ever since with mixed degrees of enthusiasm and attention. Um, of course, there have been times when I did not really listen to them or would not admit um, that I am a bit of a fan. But uh, yes, even in times when I wasn't too interested in the output of Mr. Anderson and um, his band, I have always kept at least one ear uh, more or less consciously on what was happening in the Tal camp. And um, we haven't had a lot of Jethro Tal music in, um, well, the last couple of years, the last decades, actually. There have been, of course, Ian Anderson solo albums, um, which more or less are a continuation of what he did with Tal uh, in um, the late 90s and the early 2000s. And now he's back using the band name with a more or less completely new lineup. So um, I took a look at this new album, or rather I listened to it. And um, first of all, of course, what strikes us is the title of this album. Um, correctly pronunciated, I think it is called all right. Blüte. Yes. For once, us crowds have an advantage when it comes to the pronunciation. But then uh, the title, the song titles, um, really are something that can only be pronunciated, um, I think, by um, descendants of the old Vikings. And that leads me um, to the theme or the concept of this album. Norse mythology and the ancient creed, uh, the pagan uh, beliefs of the Vikings. Now, the title Rückflut, or um, as Anderson himself has admitted, um, it's okay to simply call this Rockflute, um, is a pun or a word play on the word Ragnarok, which is um, the epic tale, the myth of creation and apocalypse um, of the Norse gods, and um, of course the word flute. Um, originally, as every reviewer will tell you, uh, the plan was to have an all instrumental album um, focused, of course, on Anderson's weapon of choice, the flute, uh, hence rock flute. Uh, but then, you know, the wordiness of Mr. Anderson got in the way and um, he got into uh, this whole concept of Norse gods and what they stand for and what their meaning might be in um, today's world. Um, so we ended up with um, a proper, um, a full rock album with lyrics and vocals. So um, I have to admit, I don't think it's the wittiest title or wordplay uh, Anderson has graced us with over the years. Um, but it's, yeah, it's it's an eye catcher, definitely, this uh, Red Blood um, spelling. Also, uh, the cover artwork leaves me a little bit undecided. On the one hand, I think it looks pretty cool, this drawn figure and it will look really good on tour t-shirts. On the other hand, it seems a little bit, you know, quickly put together on a computer. Um, an approach to cover artwork um, we've seen with Jethro Tull since the days of Tull.com. I think this was a band that used to have really great uh, cover artwork and 
record sleeve designs, but uh, somehow from the late nineteen uh, from the late nineties onwards, um, this deteriorated a little bit or was no longer um, a priority apparently for for Ian Anderson. So yeah, um, it looks nice, but it's not the most you know impressive cover artwork in my opinion. When listening to this album, um, especially when you are interested in the lyrics, as mentioned, we are knee deep in the lore and the paganism of the old uh, Norse uh, folks and clans. And um, this uh, is all based on um, northern or Scandinavian mythology as told to us in this book here, the Edda, which is a collection of um, the written verse uh, of the Norse mythology, uh, based, of course, on old ancient songs and oral traditions, but this is all we have. And um, this is a German um, translation of the Edda, so I, you don't have to fear that I will start reciting anything from this to you. Um, it's been a long time since I've read this, and um, I think, to be honest, I never really uh, read the full thing. It's, um, of course, written and also translated in a very ancient, archaic style and form, and uh, that makes it um, a little bit tiresome to read. But um, this can be quite helpful if you want to get into deeper into um, the lyrics of rock flute or rock flute. So let's quickly go through this album track by track. The intro song starts rather unusual, which is um, nice to have on a tal on a new tal record, um, a surprising intro track, because um, it all starts with a female voice speaking in Icelandic which makes the listener believe that um, the Elven Queen from The Lord of the Rings is telling an old tale. Um, then we have breathing sounds in the background, which probably have a special meaning for Anderson these days, um, you know, with his own uh, vocal and um, breathing problems. Um, but this also can be interpreted as maybe the breath of life uh that uh comes into the that comes into being or the breath of the gods that uh, starts the creation because the next song uh, Ginongagak, um which was the first single released in advance um refers to the void in Norse mythology out of which the world uh, came into existence or was created. This track has, um, compared to um, the Zella gene, uh, which only came out last year, a heavier, more rocking sound and a certain urgency to it um, that was mostly missing from the predecessor album. The mix, to be honest, still presents Tal in a strangely held back, very compressed and as other reviewers already described it, anemic sound. But uh, nonetheless, there is clearly some spark and energy left, or maybe even returning, on Röckflöte. Uh, Genunga Gap, as mentioned, is a kind of empty space, a chasm or an abyss, at the beginning of creation in uh, North mythology. Yes, I did not come fully unprepared to this album. So it's a properly rocking version of the Nordic creation myth. Um, icy streams from the north and glowing fire from the south melt together in the mythological tale to create the giant uh, Ymir and the primal cow Aldumbla, uh, which nourished Ymir. The giant Ymir, however, um, is killed by three young gods, Odin, Vili, and Ve. Um, they place him 
in the Ginunga Gap, and thus form the parts of the world out of the remains of this ancient giant. Yeah, it's a bit hard to describe, to be honest. Anderson and co. manage within less than four minutes. Um, I like this track. It has some really cool flute and guitar lines, and for a latter day Tull track, is um, mildly catchy. All Father is a very short, catchy, and upbeat flute rock track about Odin, um, the father of all gods, the godfather in Norse paganism. Oh, father, how can we help you? How can we bring you? Wondrous notions of father How do we reach you? How do we will you? Godly emotions This is followed by track number three, Feathered Consort. And this song uses the image of uh, the goddess Freya, the goddess of love and marriage or matrimony, um, and tries to transport this to a, mo a more modern setting like a showgirl in Paris. And that seems to be Anderson's spiel on this album in general. Um, first half of the song always refers to uh, the pagan gods or the myth, and in the second half of the song the lyrics try to um, create an, a rather mundane everyday image of uh, our modern everyday life, um, and tries to find out where we can find echoes of those Norse mythology and those ancient gods in our modern world. The song is more mid-tempo and again has a very nice tuneful flute passages, um, a lot more melodic I think or tuneful and memorable than the material on the Zealot gene. Hilmar on Hammer is next. Um, this one addresses the epic battle of the Ragnarok, the saga, but there are also references to uh, Vladimir Putin and his plans to renew the old Russian Empire, um, vague allusions to uh, the Ukraine war. Um, it's a decent rock song that gives the guitarist Joe Parrish, uh, the youngster in the current lineup, an opportunity for a short but cool uh, hard rock solo. Um, the songs on this album are generally kept uh, very short and concise, which is a welcome change in my opinion, because Anderson's songwriting has a tendency to become unnecessarily unwieldy sometimes, um, definitely uh, at least in in um, in the later years of uh, Jethro Tull's career and also on some of his Solo records. Stage must be set for mortal battle. All the prophecy fulfilled. A Ragnarok, gory conclusion. Drowning world to raise, rebuild. The next track is Wolf Unchained. It has got pretty heavy guitars. It starts with um, wolf howling, though I'm not sure if it's maybe not uh, um, a human creating those uh, noises. And of course, I can tell you already now that this is the least favorite track um, of my cat from this album. It's also the longest track of the album, dealing with the image of wolves in Norse legends. The wolf uh, stands for power or danger. Um, mythology knows the giant and fierce wolf Fenrir, the son of Loki. Um, Fenrir is kept bound by the gods who fear his evil strength, but the myth has it that on Ragnarok, uh, the doomsday that seals the fate of the old Norse gods, 
Penria um, eventually breaks loose and devours the sun. Um, in a tongue-in-cheek manner, Anderson switches from this imagery in the second half of the song to modern-day sheepdog races as the small heirs of the wolves that dream of a wilder past and the postman corpse to disembowel. Um, I like this less serious twist in a sonically earnest rock or even hard rock song. And for those who might be wondering why I keep um, moving my finger um, towards the camera, um, you get a little bit of behind the scenes information here. Um, for the first time, I have to admit, I have some notes uh, on my mobile phone um, to go quickly through the songs. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm uh, scrolling up and down uh, through my notes here. Um, the next track is the perfect one. This one has a bit uh, of a lovely, very melodic intro phrase, uh, which is repeated throughout the song with flute, acoustic guitar, and glockenspiel or celeste. Very sweet. And that motif really elevates the song for me, while the rest of it is rather um, a little bit tired rock by numbers. The lyrics seem to be about hero worship and its trappings. Anderson hasn't lost his mastery of the flute, while his vocal lines um, have become more and more unmemorable and samey, but we all know the reason for that. He has a serious um, medical condition with his vocal cords and his lungs, I think. Um, of course, there's always the question, why doesn't he look for somebody else to sing this material? Well, it's his choice. Um, I've gotten used to it over the years now, but of course, this will always be a weakness on Latter Day, Tull, and Anderson albums. <laughs> This one is Trickster and the Mistletoe. It has got a folky Irish feel. Personally, it reminds me of the track The Habanero Reel from Anderson's solo album The Secret Language of Birds, uh, which is my favorite Anderson solo release, uh, because that one also has this very, um, you know, upbeat, happy, slightly Irish reel or jig um, feeling to it. The trickster, I guess, is Loki, the shape-shifting god of mischief. Not the strongest track on the album and most notable for the Irish folk motif I've mentioned. Um, this is followed by Cornucopia, which is a very melodic, bright-sounding ballad uh, depicting, I think, the harvest cycle. Norse mythology knows a couple of fertility and harvest gods and goddesses. It's a very pleasant, um, sweet song, um, but suffers a bit from a very abrupt ending. Then we get to The Navigators, also taken as a single from the album. And this one really took me by surprise uh, when I heard it the first time. It's surprisingly catchy and energetic, uh, given that Tal are so late into their career now. It has a memorable and effective riff and unusual uh, synth bass. This song is about the seafaring Vikings and their god of the sea, Njord, I think, or Njord, who is also seen as the god of prosperity, because of course um, the treasures of the sea, fish for instance, uh, were very important to uh, the Norse uh, tribes. Um, it's not revolutionary music in the Tal discography, but it's one of their catchiest and most uh, rocking tracks since Tal.com or Roots to Branches. And uh, I would argue this is a real highlight of the album and also uh, of their entire Latter Day catalog. Next up, uh, we get Guardian's Watch. Um, this song has a strong Baroque or neoclassical element to it. 
Um, the core of the song, however, is a pounding, slightly generic hard rock tune about Heimdall, the guardian of the Rainbow Bridge, which is the connection between Earth and Asgard, the hall or the realm of the Norse gods. In the Ragnarok epos, uh, it is said to be stormed by giants and finally collapses, um, this rainbow bridge. Um, so it's interesting that the song is actually um, rather tame, very melodic, and as I said, has very Baroque passages to it, um, almost pastoral, actually. And the album finally re returns to the Icelandic language and sound of the first track with uh, Etherfall. Like Guardian's Watch, it has got melodic flute passages, almost bordering on kitsch a bit for me. But in the background, there is that distorted hard rock guitar again and the strangely fascinating Icelandic recital. Itherfall is a meeting place for the gods where the few survivors after Ragnarok build a new city and thus creation starts again and the album ends with the same sounds it opened with. So what's my overall impression of this? In some way, this is a direct continuation of Zelagene, and in some ways, it isn't. As mentioned, the mix still pushes the rock band a little bit into the background. It's sometimes rather flat, especially the guitars and drums, which is a shame because there's a lot of um, hard rock guitar stuff going on. But at the same time, there's um, so much more happening musically here. I think it's a livelier, um, more energetic album than uh, the Zelagene. On the whole, uh, the album brings together by now typical phrasings and musical elements from Ian Anderson, but uh, with heavier guitars and in shorter songs again, which makes the album rather easy to digest and quite entertaining. Other reviewers like to stress that um, this album will appeal to listeners who already enjoyed the Zeller gene, and accordingly, that if you don't like the Zeller gene, you won't like a uh, rock flute. Either. Um, strangely enough, while the Zeller gene, after a short phase of curiosity on my side, was a rather boring and um, disappointing experience, uh, rock flute, um, while certainly not an essential or decidedly inventive album, uh, becomes more and more entertaining with each listen for me. So it also feels more like a coherent band effort, of course, as always, with Ian Anderson in control. Apart from a few tracks and musical bits here and there, there is no real outstanding track, maybe apart from The Navigators. And you won't hear anything particularly new from Tal here, but it's certainly a solid rock album with some folks and a little bit of rock elements late into the Jethro Tal story. Um, maybe the Zalajin just had the ungrateful role of letting me get accustomed to the recent sound and uh, now uh, rock flute brings in the harvest i don't know but uh, i think this is um, noticeably stronger than the zelogy and finally for the listy people who need numbers and measures to compare albums uh, i think this is the first time i openly rate an album so i would give this one a 6.5 out of 10 and in terms of uh, ranking the discography um, this would be my new number 18 out of 23, um, pushing the Zeller gene uh, down to number 19. So uh, Rock Flute for me sits co um, confidently between the Zeller gene and Under Wraps at the moment. Yes, I'm not one of the total Under Wraps haters. Uh, Under Wraps is my number 17. Um, possibly uh, Rock Flute may go up a little bit over time, we will see. So if you enjoyed the Zeller gene, um, give this one also a listen, I think you will enjoy it. If you did not enjoy the Zeller gene, um, still uh, give this one a chance. Um, you might get pleasantly surprised um, if you can, as mentioned, um, ignore uh, clear vocal limitations. So, yeah, nice surprise from, from uh, Jethro Tull. Um, Anderson has gone on record um, he, um, in, in a few uh, interviews. He's mentioned that chances are high there will be 
yet another Jethro Tull album coming out in um, 2024, and that that one uh, is very likely then to be uh, his last release. So I will definitely keep an eye on that. Um, Jethro Tull's golden years, of course, are over. I think they will never, of course, um, touch the quality of their 1970s output again. But um, yes, this is a solid and more than uh, positive experience. Rockflut by Jethro Tull. Thanks for watching. See you again in another video.